Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 33. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south, from his mountain slopes. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they all bow down, and from you receive instruction. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob. He was king over Jeshurun when the leaders of the people assembled, along with the tribes of Israel. Let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. And this he said about Judah. Hear, Lord, the cry of Judah. Bring him to his people. With his own hands he defends his cause. Oh, be his help against his foes. About Levi he said, Your Thummim and your Urim belong to your faithful servant. You tested him at Massa. You contended with him at the waters of Meribah. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He offers incense before you and hold burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all of his skills, Lord, and be pleased with the work of his hands. Strike down those who rise against him, his foes, till they rise no more. About Benjamin, he said, Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. About Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above, and with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth, and the finest the moon can yield with the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and the favor of him who dwelt in the burning bush. Let all of these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his people. In majesty, he is like a firstborn bull. His horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them, he will gore the nations even those at the end of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and such are the thousands of Manasseh. About Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain, and there offer the sacrifices of the righteous. They will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. About Gad, he said, Blessed is he who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the people assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub, springing out of Bashan. About Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is abounding with the favor of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. About Asher, he said, Most blessed of sons is Asher. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him bathe his feet in oil. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze and your strength will equal your days. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides across the heavens to help you and on the clouds in his majesty. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you, saying, Destroy them. So Israel will live in safety. Jacob will dwell secure in a land of grain and new wine, where the heavens drop dew. Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper, and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you, and you will tread on their heights. And so this is the second to the last chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, 
and therefore the second to the last chapter of the Torah. And uh, there's a lot concerning the individual tribes of Israel contained within this chapter. First, we read in verse 1, This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. And so this is a blessing from Moses. This is not uh, directly a prophecy from the Lord. This is a blessing spoke from the, the heart of Moses. And before he gets to the individual tribes, he says has something to say about the Lord himself. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south. Let me just focus on that a second. Myriads of holy ones. And so various translations will uh, put myriads of angels Some translations will put myriads of saints. Uh, The term that's used there in Hebrew is different from what's traditionally used for angels. And so some of the translators don't know exactly what to say about it. So he may have come with myriads of redeemed human beings and angelic beings. That could be the interpretation of it. But it reads this way. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south, from his mountain slopes, Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand, both human and angel, angelic. At your feet, they will all bow and from you receive instruction. And so uh, we are holy because of what Jesus has done for us. We are part of the holy ones. We're living here on the earth yet. But there are those that have gone before us that are known in Scripture as holy ones. And uh, they are holy angelic beings as well. Then he begins the the blessings for the individual tribes. And just a quick observation before I get into these. There's no mention of Simeon, the tribe of Simeon. There have been several theories put forward why as to why Simeon is not there. Uh, Simeon was um, in rebellion to Jacob, along with Levi, with the um, retribution that took place from the rape of Dinah. And so it could be that uh, Simeon is omitted because part of what Jacob had previously said about Simeon was very negative, um, that he wasn't going to fare well. So he could be omitted for that reason. Another theory is that Simeon was later absorbed into the tribe of Judah. And so the, the blessing for Simeon is, in essence, the blessing spoken over Judah. That's a possibility. And then the truth is, we just don't know. But notice Simeon is omitted. Now, let me begin with Reuben. It says, let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. It's a very short blessing. And then about Judah, he says, hear, Lord, the cry of Judah. Bring him to his people. With his own hands, he defends his cause. Oh, be his help against his foes. And so once again, a very short uh, blessing for Judah. About Levi, there's a long, interesting blessing. Uh, He says of Levi, Let your Thummim and your Urim belong to your faithful servant. You tested him at Massa. You contended with him at the waters of Meribah. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all of his skills, Lord, and be pleased with the work of his hands. Strike down those who rise against him, his foes, till they rise no more. And so there's both um, commendation and rebuke contained in the blessing for Levi. He rebuked about not acknowledging his brothers or his own children, commendation for watching over the Lord's word and guarding his covenant and teaching his precepts to Jacob and to Israel. So some good things and some not so good things about Moses' observations and blessing on Levi. For Benjamin, he said, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rest between his shoulders. That's an interesting blessing. Another long blessing for Joseph. It's all positive. And it includes Ephraim and Manasseh in the last line, it's the children of Joseph. May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth and the finest the moon can yield, with the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and the favor of him who dwelt in the burning bush. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. In majesty, 
He is like a firstborn bull. His horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he will gore the nations, even those at the ends of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, such are the thousands of Manasseh. And so more are accounted for um, Joseph's descendants from Ephraim than Manasseh. And also, as these blessings of individual names are given, their course are for the tribes, not for these men who were long deceased at the time of this blessing. Of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice in your goings out, and you, Issachar, in your tents, he puts them together, they will summon peoples to the mountain, and there offer the sacrifices of the righteous. They will feast on the abundance of the seas and on the treasures hidden in the sand. Uh, there's an interesting blessing that follows about Gad. Um, notice there's a mention of um, uh, several things, but blessed is he who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the people assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, Dan is a lion's cub springing out of Bashan, of Naphtali. Naphtali is abounding with the favor of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. And then of Asher, he had a blessing. This is the final one that has become uh, more interesting in recent days. Most blessed of sons is Asher. Let him be favored by his brothers. Let him bathe his feet in oil. Take note of that phrase. Let him bathe his feet in oil. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze, and your strength will be equal to your days. Now, the, uh, the traditional land that was allocated to Asher, this let him bathe his feet in oil. Oil has been discovered in that land. There's actually an Asher oil company headquartered in Israel based on the this passage. And so some have interpreted this to be the blessing of the Lord saying eventually oil would be discovered there. Finally, there are general blessings for Israel. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you saying destroy them. So Israel will live in safety. Jacob will dwell secure in a land of grain and new wine where the heavens drop dew. Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you, and you will tread on their heights. Lord, we pray that these blessings would come to pass even more fully in our generation. And we say along with the words of Moses, Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. Lord, may they indeed be saved by you. May national Israel and spiritual Israel become the children of the living God through Jesus Christ as well. We ask you this now in his precious name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.